Yo, what's up? As you can see, uh, I kind of waved the white flag. I was not interested in this whole economy, the way it's shaking out. I don't want to pick up coffins, you know? Hey, if you enjoy doing that, no shame. Different strokes for different folks, you know what I'm saying? So that's not for me. So I have retreated back to my little cave and my little hovel, and I'm just doing Sanctum. It's good money, it's enjoyable, I know what I'm getting out of it, and I have to do limited trading. You know, I can just buy a bunch of tomes at the start of my session, quote unquote, and then I don't have to trade with anybody after that. <laughs> and I'm just chilling, watching stuff on the side, and just farming Sanctum. Now maybe we have a conversation about, well, wait a minute, Waff, hold on. You're not playing a cropless league, like, at all? You're just not interacting with it? And my answer is, nope, not interested, don't like it. Don't want to touch it but that is uh that's a conversation for a different video this one is sanctum and the hex blast occultist the first half of this is going to be hex blast and you know kind of just explaining how the build works what interactions are going for why we're doing things we're doing and obviously as usual i have to give you some options you know the a budget ish version but not really and then obviously the version i'm running second half of this is going to be sanctum so if you're just looking for basic tips on a hex blast sanctum things things i liked things i didn't like to run you know modifiers you know some general tips i guess then that's going to be the second part timestamps are your friend and as usual let's just uh answer some basic questions so you know uh, i would imagine some people hey waff boom hey brother this league's hard man i'm not making a lot of money how expensive is this well that depends if you're in hardcore trade then you know it was uh i don't know 10 to 15 div for me to get just the basic uniques but if you're in softcore then obviously just cut that price in half because you know that's how hard softcore works really to give you an example over here you know we have relic and patience i would say on top of all you know the uniques i'll go over them one by one and stuff but to give you an idea, Ralakesh, you can just get a garbage pair for, you know, 40C. And I would wear these. If I was just starting out and I was, you know, dirt broke, I would wear these. They are unbelievably important for this build. But, you know, they have a, a small price tag. To give you an example of what it's like over here, well, there's seven available. Half these people log off and you can't even whisper them. And, you know, these are the slim pickings. So, for me, it was 15 div. Most of those were in the boots. Uh, the rest was pretty much like, you know, 20Z and stuff like that. It's going to be way cheaper for you if you're a softcore player. If you're a hardcore player, then a hey, salute brother. So that should more or less answer, you know, the question of price. It's uh, pretty on the low end, especially if you're just going to incrementally, like I call it leapfrogging, right? So it's like you start very low, you know, you, 71 sanctums and stuff. And as you obviously are getting more money, you're slowly increasing your character along the way. And then you go to 73s and then you go 74s. And then once you have, you know, more jewels and stuff like that, that piece together the damage, you can take the next step. And then obviously we're going into 80 pluses. At least that's what I did. You know, I started low as I got higher levels, you know, more stuff. I leapfrogged and incrementally increased myself to the point where I am now. And I will say, God damn, does that feel good? I, I love the slow progression of being able to see a build slowly get better. It just... It's why I play PoE. I, I fucking, I love it. And this build, or at least this journey, I guess would be a better word, was uh, very satisfying for me. Maybe that's just because I wasn't in maps, but uh, either way, I enjoyed it. I guess another thing would be real quick, you know, hey, I do play hardcore trait. This character didn't die. She's 97, like 70%. The build in my mind is essentially finished at 78. So, you know, about four more sanctums, five more sanctums. I'll level up, hit level 98, and the build is like done. At that point, I have no more planning. This is just, I'm not touching the gear. This is what I'm wearing. And the character obviously, you know, didn't die. Uh, we'll get into more specifics in a second about, you know, things I did to, you know, try to stay alive and stuff. But ultimately, I just looked at PoE Ninja, looked at a couple Hex Blast uh, versions, some Sabo, some Occultist. Personally, for me, a witch has a lot of value and a shadow doesn't. I don't really care about any of the shadow ascendancies. I'm not going to play a build for any of those. At least not me. Hey, yo, no, no shame if you did. But for me, I'm not interested. So a witch has a ton of value potentially down the road. Maybe I just leave her as a sanctum farmer or I don't know, maybe I farm another 50 div and, you know, make another T17 farmer or something. I don't know. But I just knew that a witch had a lot of value down the road. Now, right before we get into the explanation, I would ask you to hear me out on this one. I'm not here to step on anyone's toes. I'm here to just kind of give my basic information and do my version of guides, you know, kind of make, you know, cool thumbnails. And I have a controversial take. I think the last question you would want to ask is, hey, Waff, I don't like this league or I'm looking for something else. That's probably why you clicked on this video because you're looking for another option to do something else. How much div an hour are you going to make? Honestly, div an hour is a useless dog shit metric. If you're a newer player, Sorry, you will not be able to play almost any build better than I can. If you're a more veteran player, then you'll probably be able to make more than I did. I, I don't play as hardcore as I used to. You know, I, I play, I think, at a very high level still, but I'm not trying to speedrun and min-max every single second. You know, I'm more here kind of just trying to play at a high level and enjoy myself. 
so I can't really track div an hour. Some runs, I got five div. The best run I seen was six div and I missed out on two or no one div because of just the way the, the sanctum rolls kind of happen. I couldn't get the sixth one. Sometimes I get one div. I say one in four books. I don't find any divs, maybe one in five. So I'm sorry. I can't tell you how much div an hour you're going to make. It's just, it is what it is. I, I don't want to sit here and tell you 10 or 15. That would be a lie because you may not make that much. And I would feel bad if you got baited by me because I'm not here to bait. I'm just here to give general information about a game I love. So hopefully that kind of gives you a general idea. So here is my character. My character finished off at 19 million DPS, at least if I finish the level. This is 98, obviously, like I said, I'm only level 97. So the uniques, um, these are all essentially mandatory. Um, like I said, if you're a softcore trader, you know, rally catches would be the big crux for me. At least they were for me in hardcore, but in softcore, you know, everything should be pretty much straightforward here. You know, uh, taking a look in softcore, you know, we've got a bunch of sandstorm visages. It's one div. This is probably the thing that for some reason is the most expensive. You know, in hardcore, I paid three for mine. Uh, void batteries, 20, 30 C for just an uncorrupted one. So 30 chaos. And then badge of the brotherhoods are 30 C. These are all corrupted though, but uh, you know, you can just get yourself started. You're doing sanctum farming. So, you know, you will exponentially make more and more money as you get better and better gear and you go higher and higher and stuff. But uh, you know, there is a price to entry, I guess. I would say, you know, three to five div would be able to, you know, more or less get you where you are. And then a high Templar Dominus Militant Faith. Obviously you'd have to manually plug this in and stuff. I'll explain it in a second, but yeah, these are all like 70, 80 C. So about a four to five div entry for you. For me, it was 15 and I didn't even have a Militant Faith at that time, but hey, it is what it is. I'm not here to complain. I'm just saying, you know, you can make it work and I'll have some options for you to try to make it a little bit cheaper. But ultimately I would say these uniques here, they're all pretty much mandatory. They all worked really nice together. So let's start explaining what the hell's going on. So defensively, I have enough where, I mean, hey, I haven't died, you know, so. I got that going for me. I do have close calls. The big two things that almost kill me are, well, obviously Lycia, I guess, if we want to, you know, hey, if you fuck up on the Lycia fight, you know, don't, but I'll explain that more in the Sanctum section. For now, I just wanted enough defense to where I wouldn't shock myself or anything like that, or I wouldn't get shocked by anything, right, on the off chance, so we're running Tempest Shield. I also was worried about the idea of dying to the Flicker guy. So when I first started out, the Flicker guy almost killed me twice. Uh, you know, I had low end damage, I was level 73 and doing my first two sanctums and he terrified me so early on i was actually doing the no light version and i was running determination i didn't even run zealotry i was just like nope i don't want to die i am broke if i rip here so i'm going to just play it safe i had more than enough damage to do you know 70 to 74 sanctums and i was chilling so i just ran zealotry i ran no enlightens you know there's a no enlightened setup here that's the end game one over here in the tree you have you know no jewels we're broke and then kind of you know the end game version with you know jewels now let's kind of talk about the, the reason why I believe we're running all of these and they all kind of work together. It's very straightforward. If you've ever looked at a hex blast build, this probably all makes sense. You can just copy the gear, don't think about it and just play it. But if you want to know exactly why things are working the way they are, then you know, let's get to it. So an occultist has a couple things going for her. She has nearby enemies have minus 20 to cold res. That's important for hex blast. So the way hex blast does its damage, the way hex blast ultimately works is that we're actually doing chaos damage on hit but we're not targeting chaos resistances. So to give you a visual, you know, we'll hover over Hex Blast here. You are doing chaos damage, right, on the hit. However, if you read that line right there, chaos damage with hits is resisted by the lowest resistance instead. Basically, you do chaos damage, but you're not targeting chaos resistance. So over here, this node is actually very valuable, not because it has minus 20 chaos resistance, that doesn't do anything. The minus 20 cold resistance is actually what's helping. So because we're targeting cold resistance with our ascendancy, we're gonna wanna target cold resistance with, with everything. So the curses we need to run are gonna be elemental weakness because that targets cold resistance, obviously, and then frostbite on a ring to target more cold resistance. And we're gonna go even harder because we're gonna get cold exposure on the gloves. And so you are basically just targeting cold, 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 which is a good thing because it also means that you are hitting them with chaos, but because you're targeting cold resistance, you are actually like freezing the mobs. You freeze them, you're, you're chilling them stuff, and it, it's great. The biggest great defense this build has is that I just throw a mine and everything's frozen, and it's like, hey, I don't have to worry about really getting hit because as long as I have mines in the area, they're frozen. Well, 90% of the time they're frozen. Obviously, you know, don't over rely on it. Save the points and get unholy authority. And then forbidden powers, honestly, probably the biggest reason. That AoE for the power charges is sick as hell. Like, holy shit. Massive AoE. You kind of throw the mine in just kind of a general area and it just blows up and kills the mobs. It's sick. And, you know, we're stacking power charges and power charge stacking, you know, air power charge stacking with more spell damage, power charge stacking with the void battery, power charge stacking with Malachi's loop. Now, here's an interesting thing. 
Void Battery, you know, you do more damage with Void Battery when you have max power charge. That's why the Rallakesh and Patience is, in my opinion, it's mandatory. I think if there was anything out of this that was actually the most important, it would probably be like a Void Battery and the Boots. And then everything else after that is kind of like even. Even the Sandstorm Visage, I would say, is like afterwards because, you know, you need the crit. Sandstorm Visage, you know, needs crit. So I would say, well, you get the crit first, right? Malachi's Loop. Now, here's the fun part is that because we are running Rallakai's Impatience, Rallakesh? Rallakesh's Impatience, you ignore the downside of the Malachi's Loop. Uh, Rallakesh Impatience overrides all forms. So you always have max frenzy charges you always have max endurance charges and you always have max power charges did i say that maybe i said it twice but you get the point now replica restless sword you can wear a normal one i don't think replica restless sword's ever expensive even on hardcore there was only 20c for me to buy this one you know get a better life roll basically why are we wearing this it actually has a downside we are losing maximum you know endurance charges that that is negative so for a particular reason maybe if your your reses were struggling or you know whatever you could wear just a normal restless ward i don't think it matters though i, I just took the extra move speed because i just wanted fucking move speed and as you can see over here we have the movement speed modifier 200 percent if you take this off it goes down to 143 if you were to put on a normal restless ward you would still gain like 30 percent move speed but i just wanted more move speed so i wore this the badge of the brotherhood makes it so your frenzy charges match your power charges you know we're always at max power charges which means we're always at max frenzy charges which means we're always getting that more and more multiplier and we're always getting that benefit to the move speed profane proxy is mandatory absolutely 100 put this in your right slot we don't care about shock because hex blast can obviously shock chill and freeze and ignite even though it does chaos damage so we are shocking we're getting to like i don't know 15 20 25 30. i've seen you know 25 shocks on uh, lycia i've seen 10 you know it just depends on the rolls on the sanctum and stuff so call it even on 20 you don't care about the shock on from profane proxy because we're shocking so put this in your right ring put a curse in it and you're good to go now the great news about sanctum is we don't need to overcap our resistances or anything like that you don't really need a lot of chaos res but thankfully you know the boots have chaos res on them and just being an occultist you get a lot of chaos res so you know you don't have to worry about it anyway the gloves uh you would probably want i i would probably say you want it you want these gloves you want decks um i am running haste but it's just kind of you know for the move speed it does not work at all the cast speed does not matter mine throwing speed is what affects mines uh, so cast speed doesn't do shit the haste is just for move speed you know it's nice we're kind of running through sanctum we want to be as fast as we and theoretically can so you know why not get the dexterity get your reses capped and just you know hit life you can get and there, there are better gloves if you wanted even more damage but i don't know 19 million damage is kind of a stupid amount anyway so personally i just felt like i was good if i was gonna go ahead and remake these then uh you know i'd just probably get another 20 or 30 hp i, I wouldn't really care for more damage the ring all right so this is the there's only two pieces we're crafting here and both are you're probably gonna have to craft yourself maybe you can buy it uh, you know you if you're playing softcore trade you, you should be able to buy it if you're in hardcore trade a hey, shout out um yeah you're gonna have to make this bitch on your own so what i did is there was i you don't need an unset ring i was doing a like i said i was doing the squishier version beforehand where i needed an unset ring turns out i didn't need the unset ring at least not on this version so you can go for two things you can go for an amethyst ring if you if you really wanted that chaos res you could go for a coral ring but obviously i think a vermilion ring would make more sense because we have such terrible percent life over here every percent life matters if i was going to remake this ring and i had more access to more stuff i would go for a vermilion i would use a whatever the cheapest exalt is so crusader hunter whatever and then i would switch the influences on harvest because you can you know change the influence from you know re redeemer to hunter or whatever but we want redeemer and the reason you want redeemer is because you want to be able to get frostbite on hit that's specifically to redeemer so you have your rebellion ring you change it to redeemer hope and fertiled it hopefully you fertiled beforehand with whatever you're looking for if you're really desperate on res then you know put res on it if you're desperate for hp like i was then you'd put health on it so this is a fertiled unset ring with redeemer influence and you use blue juice you use caster blue juice and you target it and you hit it over and over again i'd say like one in ten you'll hit frostbite unfortunately i can't promise you any hp because i never rolled hp i used twenty thousand blue juice I never hit health higher than like tier five so maybe you have better luck than me this had the res i wanted and the curse and i was like well i'm broke so this is good enough and i put it on and i never made another one the belt uh you do not need an elder belt you don't need an hunter belt you know life percent life was just me being like well i don't want to die and yeah the life percent you know belt is kind of the go-to standard when you're trying to not rip and you have access to you know make a belt so i did the exact same thing i used a redeemer exalted orb on a stygian and i just re-rolled it till it either hit elder or hunter you want it to be at least eye level 84 and i just rolled it with pristine fossils over and over and over and over again i used like 60 and i finally hit this one that was okay this belt is fertile as well it does have the life percent life so that's only like four percent max life it's pretty terrible but again i was just i was broken i i 
just had no more currency to work with so i got this capped my res and uh wore it ever since but that is your core gear more or less you know not too complicated it's a lot of uniques but hopefully you understand how this works what's going on here and how this is all you know combining as you can see i have 18 mines out and this is reserving in real time how much mana i have and that's good because i only have the tree set up to throw 18 mines because i only had enough mana to throw 18 mines and 18 is the base standard now you can get three more right here but i didn't have the mana to reserve that so you know here we go but i don't have zero mana reserved i actually you know have 26 percent. so keep that in mind mana is kind of the problem with hex blast. it's a it's a little annoying but uh you know eventually you know you can make it work but just keep in mind this is with you know two enlightens this is not a, a very cheap build you know, i have tempest shield vitality arrogance with enlighten keep in mind you want your unreserved life to be 50 percent or lower you do not want it to be 51 percent. look at my damage it's 19 million if i lowered it i would go to 14 why because i need to be at considered low life for pain attunement to work so please do not make this mistake it's very very important the other Enlighten is just so I can run uh, Vol Haste. It doesn't do anything for Petrified Blood, I'm pretty sure, like, at all. Yeah, it doesn't do anything for Petrified Blood, so it's just for me to be able to run Skitterbots and Haste. You don't need Vol Haste. I thought I would maybe like it. I end up never using it, so, you know, just, just for Haste. The rest of the skills are pretty straightforward. You know, you got your Zealotry, Phase Run, Detonate Mine, Steel Skin, and Automation. Holy shit, Automation is actually goaded. I know we lost a skill point for, you know, running, you know, mines, but... They instantly detonate, like instantaneous detonate. Steel skin is up every other two seconds or so. Phase run is active every like one and a half second, give or take. So it just kind of works together. It's it's actually pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. So I love it. I uh, didn't think I'd love it. I don't know. It feels even more smooth than like normal mines, I guess, in my mind. But maybe I'm maybe I'm just cooked, but uh, I like it. it. It actually feels pretty good. Other than that, there's pretty much nothing else to say. The jewels are the standard, you know, chaos jewels or something special here. If you wanted to make these, I would, I would just not just go buy it. Don't be lazy, you know, just, just be, actually just be lazy and just buy them. Surprise sabotage and guerrilla tactics, you know, very straightforward. If you've ever played a miner, mine speed, pen should be very straightforward. And then another jewel to just add on that icing on the top of damage. These jewels are, you know, very standard, just life. I obviously mandatory went for life. You don't have to do that if you're crazy and, and you're softcore. But even though this character is obviously very squishy, I still wanted to get as much life as I could where I could. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the entire character. And then if you wanted to see the budget version, the budget version is down here. There's really not much to say. You just run Determination instead of Zealotry and you just take off some of the stuff. And obviously it's because you don't have these jewels. You just invest more into like just res, health, and you know, more just generic crit and shit. And that's basically it. Now on to the Sanctum. I think there's really no other way to do this other than just talk about like which afflictions obviously were bad. For obviously the good stuff, you know, we'll talk about the good stuff in a second, but that's going to be more strategy based. For now, let's just talk about what I just absolutely decided I'm never running this. To the point where a few of these I pretty much would just instantly end the run. I would just kill the Sanctum on the spot and just go buy another Tome and just start over if I got one of these. Now, obviously, I don't think all of these are in the game still. I think some of these aren't even in the game, but, uh, you know, this is just PoE Wiki, so you got to work with what we got. But for me personally, you know, I'm just going to talk about the ones that actually mattered. Anomaly Attractor. So what this is, is this is not the guards spawn of all tile. I actually don't care about this, the guard spawning. This one's pretty annoying though, because this spawns the anomalies in the boss room, which means it'll, it'll spawn and it's going to shoot projectiles at you. It's actually pretty annoying, even though we're going to one shot the boss. So if you can't avoid this, I would actually avoid this. Traps Impact Infinite Resolve. I just said no, I'm not interested in that. I wasn't the best trap runner. Actually, I feel like I was really good at just killing the mobs and killing the the hard rooms without getting hit whereas for traps for some reason in my head it just doesn't really matter i would just still fuck up and not care and run into an accident so this was a no-go for me orb of negation is a no-go as well this turns off your room reveals which we'll explain in a second but i didn't like this at all was not interested in having this so i avoided this every time i could uh rooms are unknown i actually didn't care about it. was not interested in this at all i did every single room it didn't matter i was just looking at the rewards did not care what room it was and i'll kind of show examples of why that was the case but yeah i did not give a shit about this this was completely fine fewer rooms i uh, never like this don't like it uh kind of just you know ruins your chance of finding divine so anything that obviously affects that i just consider a no-go guards releasing a volatile anomaly honestly i didn't care about half the time i would just run away from all of them and they would never even detonate by the time i cleared a room even if i was doing desecrated crypts if you know what that is so i didn't give a shit about this it was actually fine 
Traps Impact Resolve, same thing. I just didn't like any of the trap stuff. Even faster traps, I just was not interested in. Deceptive Mirror, I considered a, a run ender. Um, you can obviously get lucky and click on the room and still go to it, but I just, if I was in like room second floor, for example, I was just like, nope, this is a just run ender, not interested, I'm out of here. Monster action speed was actually a no-go. This is the, in my opinion, the scariest one because it makes it so when you round a corner or turn a wall, the mobs will already have been shooting you with the projectiles and you know which ones I'm talking about. It's the fucking little arrow dudes and uh, they will just hit you before you even knew that they were there. So normally you have enough time to kind of like run past them or see them and react. With this, you pretty much have no time to react and you're just going to get hit around just like a random corner or from like off screen. So I consider this dang, just absolutely hell no. This was uh, not not taking this under any circumstance. The one time I did, I lost four divines in a run because I was like, oh no, I, I should be able to handle this. Nope, wasn't able to. Round a corner, guy hit me, fucking I was tilted. Rewards are unknown, obviously speaks for itself. You want to see your rewards, so I, I consider this nope. Monsters doing more damage. Now in softcore, feel free, but in hardcore, obviously I didn't want to potentially rip, so I just avoided this as much as I could. Losing resolve when you lose a flask? Didn't care about I just took my flask off, like whatever, it doesn't matter. A reduced effect of your thing, same thing, you don't want your relics to be affected because then you can't see as many rooms revealed or whatever your strategy you're doing, so I consider this a no-go and the rest uh, I didn't really care about. Well, the rest of these were kind of fine. The ones I mentioned are the only ones I considered like, nope, not interested. And then for the positive afflictions, I'm not really going to talk about because I just didn't really care. I was just interested in finding divines, so I didn't really target anything. Once your build is strong enough and you're good to go, you don't really care about positives. You just don't want to break your run, and that's pretty much it for the afflictions, to be honest. All right, so just to go over kind of like the scary one, right? Everybody thinks Desecrated Crypts are terrifying, and I agree they are, but as you see, I can see like multiple Divines and stuff. I know this is going to be a good run. Nothing special. So I willingly go into Desecrated Crypts. Now, here's what I do. This is the scary one. Everybody's, you know, terrified of this one. And I, I think early on you should be too, but eventually it's not a big deal. What I do is I stand in a corner because I know where the mobs are going to spawn. They're going to spawn, you know, here in the middle and in the left. So I put my mines, I can only put 18 down, right? And I'm throwing five at a time. So I can only put essentially four quote unquote mine areas down. So I just put them where I know they're going to spawn consistently. And then I run in a pattern constantly back and forth. The mobs are spawning, they're frozen, they're hit. And then I just finish them off if they didn't die. So I spawn, I know, and I want these to all target me here slowly. And then I just flame dash away. And even flame dash because they're so slow but basically yeah i wait for it to time out i'm just trickling back and forth i'm putting the mines everywhere and the room is already done and yeah that's pretty much how i handled it so i didn't really care about desecrated crypts i didn't care about any of these rooms they didn't really bother me i think for the rest of this run it's pretty straightforward so let's just go to lycia all right so when we get to lycia there's a couple ways you can go about it some people have different strats for me i always stand in the corner because she will most likely dot like dash this way Sometimes she does bug and run backwards. So if you're in softcore, you know, maybe you go up here and kind of run around her. For me, I always try to flame dash over her. And I wait for her to go. And yeah, she's doing this. Most of the time she does this. Sometimes she dashes. One time she bugged, dashed this way, and then teleported back on top of me and then used the beam skill and it wiped my run. And I was like completely confused. It's only ever had one time and I've done like, I don't know, 80 sanctums. And that's the first time I've ever seen it. So she's coming at me, she, she's just slow, she's chilled, and she's dead. And that's pretty much it. So the final room is very straightforward as well. So I always cast Despair to, you know, get my Wither up and ready to go. I preload her with mines, you run in, and I'm waiting for her to do two things. The thing that, well, police car. I guess I'll just wait a second. Actually, I smell fire right now. Fuck. I just realized I'm smelling like heavy burning. I live in California, if you didn't know that. Alright, the sirens are a little bit far away, so let's go ahead and finish this. But basically, we're preloading. I'm actually scared of one of her attacks, and it's the wind beam thing. Because it starts out, and it actually is doing damage to you the second she aims it at you. So what I do is I preload, and I kind of run to see which attack she's doing. She's doing the spinny blades, so as long as they're not on top of me, I know I have time to hit her. I'm waiting for her second attack. She didn't throw a second attack. She teleported because she was going to do her big, you know, phase thing. And I knew I had time to throw them. Kill her. We're done. And I go get the loot, get the footage as soon as possible so I could show you and make this video look good. And uh, yeah, mission accomplished, I guess. Jesus, the sirens are really loud. I had to wait five minutes. But basically, 
that's more or less, you know, most Sanctum. That's kind of how it works. And then there's money strategies. Obviously, I think just running Sanctum is better than me explaining it to you. There's a little bit more detailed guides about specifically, you know, certain rooms and how you can skip some traps and stuff. It's just a lot to explain, and I don't have the visual capabilities of wanting to go step by step doing that because uh, I just kind of want to play the game, if I'm being honest with you. So forgive me, but I can at least go over some basic strategies. Now, I haven't started on these because the additional rooms this is the more core strategy now when i started out i started out with just these my whole setup was just with the additional rooms and in the very very beginning i was running this so this is really good to start out you know obviously it's it's you know this you can get a square version yeah this so one of these versions if you're starting out and you don't want to fail a run then get one of these maximum resolve when you kill a boss and then like percent resolve or inspiration when you receive an affliction and maximum resolve when you kill a boss these are insane for making your runs as safe as possible if you're not good at sanctum then get one of these just put it on i i wore just one until i relearned how to do sanctum because it had been about you know nine months since i i seriously did sanctum i fit it in here and then i just filled the rest with additional rooms as i could these are you know i don't know these were only 50c in soft or hardcore probably cheaper in, in softcore i'd imagine and then the two additional rooms, obviously, we'll, we'll explain that in a second. But that's like the, just one of these, if you really want to be safe, obviously, you know, hey, you can get two. One was good enough for me, it always ended the runs with like 600 resolve or something like that, and a bunch of inspiration, so I had no problems. I think this is uh, mandatory for starting out, especially if you don't know how to do Sanctum particularly well. Now, the most known strategy, and the strategy I think that's the simplest, is that you get a bunch of additional rooms. And this just makes it so when you open your Sanctum, you know, you can just start it out and see a bunch of you know rooms now i'll show you an example in a second of kind of just what that looks like if you don't have any idea but ultimately you want to get as many additional rooms as possible like two additionals and stuff so you can start taking these out you want to see as much of the entire rooms available so you can see the divines i mean that's the name of the game we just want divines however if i want to run for example these a duplicate a random offer which basically would just mean that i just want to find divines and so i skip every reward i look for the divines but it takes a slot, right? So if I can replace as many of these ones with twos as I can, and as you can see, I need, you know, one, two, three more. And then, I'd, you know, maybe I could start considering, you know, start running a lot of these or these even. So for now, kind of, you know, waiting till I can buy these and in hardcore trade there, well, there's none for sale. I mean, here, let's go take a look. Uh, how many two rooms available are there right now? Oh, there's none. There was one. That guy went to bed. So I should have bought that before doing this recording. So sucks to me, me. <laughs> but uh, the biggest reason I'm even stopping here is because just to, to consistently find the divines, this is what I'm running. I have, what, three additional rooms and I found one and the rest are just ones. And at this point, I was comfortable. Like if there's a divine, I'm most likely finding it, at least at this point. If I want to, you know, start doing these giga duplicate strats and stuff, I need more. This is the basic strategy. Now there are other strategies that you can run. There's gonna be, other people probably have way more detailed videos because there's a lot of testing involved and I personally just don't wanna test. However, for example, this is for relic farming. Um, obviously, you know, if you don't know what it, what it is, original sin farming, it's an extremely expensive, unique, very rare, very hard to do, very difficult run. I'm personally not interested in doing it or farming relics. I'm just here to just get divines, but there's a strategy involved with just, you know, turning all of the coins you get into more relics. Then you have the balance of terror, obviously. So you just, you know, put this in. These, this one's just more straightforward, right? You just chuck it in there. Same thing with this one. This is just for the eternal damnation. Not a big deal. And Sam Storm Visage, same thing. Like it's, you just kind of chuck it in, whatever. This one though is more about like changing your entire strategy to just merchants and coins, merchants, merchants, merchants. And you can still get like duplicated, you know, offers and stuff like that and, and just go for merchant strat, but it's a different strategy than this. And I think the more safer and reliable one, at least from my understanding over the like last two years since Sanctum came out, is that additional rooms is usually the best just so you can see the divines, see the danger routes, avoid them, go get your money, get in, get the fuck out. And personally, I agree. Now, I'm not going to do a full Sanctum, but let's just kind of give you a more or less a visual, I guess, of what it looks like. So you open it with my current setup. Obviously, we can see we're only missing these. And this is enough, right? Because I can just pick, uh, you know, the lesser of the two evils, more or less. Start here, maybe go up down, and I can reveal sections of these. So I still don't have enough to reveal, you know, let's say I'll go up here. Well, then I probably won't be able to reveal like these two, but I can get the majority. And obviously, this is why I still want like three more additional rooms, because if I had another, you know, one, two, three, and I only seen the north, and I can just pick, all right, well, I don't like this, and I'm going up here. And that's pretty much it. That's the Sanctum strategy. Um, I already went over, you know, the afflictions and stuff. So, you know, you start out, 
don't break your run first floor or second floor just don't break your run you know it's very straightforward you're purposely trying not to make your run terrible but you know handshakes are really good um i find a lot of good boons out of these even like the beginning here you know you're really just looking for benevolent handshake and merchant you know early on that's all you want you can't you don't really care about the chaos and stuff obviously if you want to go for it go for it but for me i'm always trying to get as many rooms as i can revealed i'm trying to make the run as easy or get myself faster where you get you know 60 percent move speed for example and i'm just trying to set myself up for just like the easy brain dead floor three floor four where's the divines go get to the vines i don't care what i get because i've already got so much like power from all the buffs and my brain's off i'm just cruising watching fucking i don't know uh Pokemane interviews on my other monitor. Yeah, I exposed myself, I guess. The last tip I can possibly give is that, you know, divines do not spawn on floors one and two, they spawn on floors three and four. If you do not see any divines, the handshakes can have divines behind them. So keep that in mind. If you see a handshake on three and four, you see zero divines at all. Maybe a divine is behind a handshake. I would say, I, I don't know, out of like 40 sanctums, I may have found like five divines behind a handshake. So not a very high chance, but if you're desperate, then, you know, it's an option. And that's more or less it. That's a surface level kind of, you know, sanctum overview, I guess. And the problem is, is that I can't really go into details because this build kind of just shits on stuff. I mean, I've been showing footage this whole time. I had no problems. Uh, even on the low end version of this build, I was just killing things instantly. So I want to say, you know, don't do this. Don't go here. Don't do these rooms. You know, but honestly, I think if you just you take it easy, run the easy, you know, uh, recommendation I put on the beginning. If you're worried about failing a sanctum, put those on and yeah, you'll have like 500 resolve, maybe like 200 inspiration. You're not going to fail a sanctum at that point. And then once you're used to it, you can take that off, put the additional rooms on or go for the strategy of your choice and you grind it out. That's pretty much it. Uh, the build's good. I've made a lot of money with it. Not sure what I'm going to play next, but hey, I'm, I'm just honestly just enjoying myself just watching like Dead by Daylight and stuff on my other monitor and just kind of chilling out, staying away from the whole T17 fucking conundrum that Triple G's made. And honestly, I'm just enjoying PoE right now by, you know, not participating in the game, I guess. But, uh, you know, there's always a, a way to enjoy PoE. Right now, I don't enjoy the base game, so I'm just going to Sanctum and I like Sanctum, you know, I like finding three, four divines and stuff. It's fun. Hopefully this is an alternative for you. And I like this build. I haven't died on it, you know, um, you know, 97 and well, I named my character. I hate this league. So you can get my general feelings. Hope this helps you have a good one. Catch you next time.